So hi everyone, this is Kashish Gupta from India. And uh, I'm doing research on combining NMR spectroscopy and X-ray crystallography for life detection. And my research advisor is Dr. Tony in collaboration with Dr. Graham and Dr. Chita Nagiri. So uh, I would like to begin by quoting a statement by Stephen Zweig, an Austrian novelist. So uh, the union of opposites, in so far as they are really complementary, always results in the most perfect harmony. And the seemingly incongruous is often the next natural, most natural. This is not a quote by a scientist, neither did the Austrian novelist. Stephen directed it to the scientific community. But I would still like to ask you all to ponder over this because this is something which might be the base of bringing in novel techniques in life detection. So uh, if we talk about the history of complementarity in life detection, that's what I'm focusing on. The best example of complementarity we know is GCMS, gas chromatography mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometer was known for its main uh, was known for its main focus on two space related applications, studying the composition of planetary atmospheres and monitoring air quality on manned space missions. But when it was combined with highly complementary technique, gas chromatography, the combination turned into a very powerful scientific tool for life detection with better identification ability than either technique alone. So as we can see in this figure, that the gas chromatograph and the mass spectrometer are two different instruments, but they combine the technology so that we can get the data which is combined from both these two technologies. But these are not integrated technologies in one instrument. These both are two different instruments. This thing we have to remember. But Talking about me, I'm more interested in rocks, minerals, geology, water, and surface chemistry. So the existing technique which caught my attention first was X-ray crystallography. It might not have an impressive timeline like mass spectrometer and gas chromatography mass spectrometer, but have a cool work record. So this is the Kemin X-ray diffractometer. No previous lander or rover other than Curiosity had been able to perform X-ray diffraction because the machines required for this technique were typically the size of a refrigerator. Engineers were able to shrink the size of a refrigerator to this size of a shoebox and make it less power hungry, allowing it to be packed and sent to Mars on the rover. And that was the Curiosity rover. Talking about the chemin technology, how did it work? So Curiosity delivered an aspirin sized sample of fine soil to chemin, which was placed in one of the windowed cells seen in the image. The image on the right, you can see two circles. These were the cells, or you can say a windowed cell. And on this, the sample was located. Those cells vibrated 2000 times a second to shake up the Martian sand, which is then blasted with the X-rays. The X-rays penetrated into tiny grains, determining the spacing of their atoms and uniquely identifying which minerals are present and their quantity. These diffracted X-rays are then focused onto a CCD, which we can see as the flag screen or kind of thing. We can say that it is analogous to the back of a digital camera. That's how it works. So we get these rings on the CCD. These rings are called the by rings. And these are analogous to barcodes. For, an, uh, for a layman who is not in science or in spectroscopy, they can compare this structure, this uh, pattern with the barcodes. That's how it looks. Then the radius of these rings are measured using Bragg's law. The Bragg equation allows us to measure the spacing between different layers of atoms. 
So what is this? N times lambda is equal to 2D sine theta. And since each crystal has a unique set of possible X-ray reflections, this information tells us what kind of mineral or what kind of rock it is. So thanks to Bragg's. But then again, X-ray crystallography is not a perfect technique. It's one of the biggest advantage can also be its disadvantage. So what is it? The most critical step for determining structures by X-ray crystallography has been and will continue to be obtaining high quality crystals of samples of interest. However, many biomolecules are difficult to crystallize and some even cannot be crystallized due to certain factors. But instead of looking out for alternatives, why don't we try a technique which is complementary to X-ray crystallography so that we can get benefits from the other technique as well as retain the uniqueness of X-ray crystallography for detection. This approach based on complementarity is tested and proven. We saw the example of GCMS, that is gas chromatography mass spectrometer, which has been used on Viking Mars landers, MSL, and Huygens probe. Compared with X-ray crystallography, NMR spectroscopy, that is nuclear magnetic resonance, has unique features. From the structural biology viewpoint, it is the only method which directly monitors the conformational properties of a protein or its complex at the individual amino acid level and that too without any prior conformational knowledge of the protein. That means we do not have the knowledge of the structure of the protein, but still we can find the structure or even determine its complexity and amino acid, at amino acid level. Furthermore, NMR spectroscopy is uniquely suited for and has been exceedingly powerful in investigating dynamic properties of biomolecules. The three-dimensional structure interaction with its binding partners and dynamic properties together provide a more complete understanding of cellular functions of a biomolecule. And that's what an astrobiologist wants. But the game changes when it says that NMR spectroscopy is essentially powerful in detecting the presence of water. And that's where it become my favorite from astrobiology point of view, because water calls and the only life we know is majorly based on water and that's our earth. Furthermore, NMR spectroscopy is uniquely suited for and has been exceedingly powerful in investigating dynamic properties of biomolecules, as I told. And in this figure, we can see that how NMR spectroscopy and X-ray crystallography combine and provide us three different things, structural determination, molecular interaction, and molecular dynamics. These things are very important for structural determination. NMR displayed its great potential for being used in space exploration. But the challenges related to size, power consumption, sample collection, signal to noise ratio, all hold it back this wonderful technique. We can see in this slide the main challenges that for that hold it NMR from being used in space exploration. But uh, two years ago, two or three years ago, the University of Minnesota and Biosubspace Technologies worked on a project for almost two years and proposed to co-develop this integrated system. And here we can see that how a portable NMR spectrometer, integrated system consisting of a portable NMR spectrometer, Kashish, we lost your audio there. Can you unmute again? Yeah, sorry. So, 
They proposed to co-develop this integrated system, which consisted of a portable NMR spectrometer, a system for increasing the concentration of molecules of sampled ocean water. And that was the process of lyophilization. And they also uh, co-developed a, a system capable of operating in a high radiation environment with mineral power and data bandwidth requirements. That's how they worked on power consumption and how they can face the radiation, which is very high if you talk about moons like Europa and Celidus, et cetera. Uh, uh, is my slide visible? Um, uh, so we see NMR spectroscopy and X-ray crystallography. No. So the two techniques containing completely different information can be complementary to each other. X-ray crystallography, when combined with NMR spectroscopy, can resolve each other biases and give information more accurate than obtained by either. And this is how, in this slide, I have noted down the points, and this is how these two techniques were complementary to each other and provide us the most accurate information that can be obtained by either. Further development in combining these two technologies is much needed. Only that we can cancel out the challenges. Both NMR and X-ray crystallography offers unique applications. Here we can see the unique applications of NMR like metabolic profiling, molecular structures and dynamics, molecular interactions, drug discovery, and so on. When combined with X-ray crystallography, they can be used almost anywhere. In this figure, you can see the applications of X-ray diffractometer, which is a part of X-ray crystallography in pharmaceuticals, environment, nanocompositories, geology, and so on. And these are unique from NMR. You might have noted this. Their combination will not only improve the life detection technologies, but also improve the life on Earth as well as space. So the research has not to be stopped yet. Every time there will be scope for improvement. There are still questions that needed to be answered. So in my concluding marks, remarks, I want to put forward some questions which will be the base of this research further. How can it integrate sample collection approach? Can it work well in extreme conditions? What can be the ways to integrate the results? When we will, uh, when we will work to find the answers to these questions, then we can say that, yeah, we have done some work in combining the X-ray crystallography and NMR spectroscopy for life detection. Thank you. Yay, great job, Kashish. Um, I think we might have time for one question if someone has a really quick one. Um, if not, I'll ask a quick question here. Um, so you mentioned like bi biomolecules are very hard to, crystal to crystallize. Uh, some people for some proteins and other organic molecules spend years trying to get a crystal so they can do crystallography. So I'm glad you mentioned using NMR, but what do you think about the importance then of bringing samples back from space, you know, from Mars, for instance, because then, then we have time to crystallize samples and, and to work on them and, and do XRD and X-ray crystallography and everything else we want to do. Do you think it's more important to use these instruments in situ in space or to bring samples back? I think it is more useful to use these instruments in situ because uh, X-ray crystallography and NMR spectroscopy has further many complementary things. So this approach has to be taken, complementarity. So if we talk about microscopy, microscopy is something, if we send a microscope there, then we probably do not need to have sample collection procedures, which are very time consuming and has a lot of you know, danger factors because not every time the sample collection can be successful and it cannot always reach early on the earth. So 
cryo uh, cryo electron microscopy is one microscopy which can be used complementary to these two techniques but for first i guess we have to work on these two techniques then we can inculcate microscopy also awesome great answer